I realise I'm probably massively overgeneralising here, but in all the long years I've worked in this industry, I've noticed some, let's call them common traits amongst camera people, like an interest in expensive vans, a fondness for Timberlands, an appreciation of designer watches, and a love of bags. Not the Gucci, Hermes, Prada type of bags. I'm talking petrol, Peli, Think Tank. Bags and cases to put all your camera kit in. Every camera person you talk to will have their favourites. I prefer soft bags for normal working, but I need to use hard cases when I'm travelling. And there's a problem with the hard cases, that plucking pick and fluck foam. Ta-da! The trouble with all that pick and pluck foam is it usually falls apart within weeks. It doesn't have the structural integrity to hold much of our kit together. What I have tried is going to one of these companies that'll laser cut much denser foam to your own design around your kit and to fit any case or bag that you want. It's brilliant, works really well. The trouble is, apart from the cost, what happens when you change or buy a new piece of kit? If you want to put it in the same bag, you end up trying to adapt and cut up this expensive foam to fit the new piece of kit. And before you know where you are, you're back to square one with a box full of bits of foam. I know, I've been there. So I've been looking for an alternative for quite some time. And I think I've found something interesting. Shadow foam. Now let's be clear, this video isn't sponsored. I bought all the foam myself and shadow foam don't even know I'm making a video. Now this box is what they call a value pack. And it has sheets which are 600 millimetres by 420 millimetres. And in each value pack, you can either have three sheets 50 millimetres thick or five sheets 30 millimetres thick, like that. Either way, it's 150 millimetres. And the size of these value packs is perfect for covering any of the 1500 series Peli cases, which are the bags and the cases that I use. Now I'm sure shadow foam will supply any size of foam you want, but for the size of cases and pelly boxes that I want to fill with foam, these value packs at the time of recording are just 35 pounds, which is pretty good value. If you've got a few cases to do and you end up spending more than 75 pounds, then you'll also get a cutting kit with a very sharp scalpel, five spare blades, some glue to correct your mistakes, and most importantly, a set of cut-proof gloves. Now, the big surprise to me was seeing how quickly the blades on this scalpel will go dull or, or blunt just from cutting the foam. If you've got a few cases to do, I would definitely invest in a box of 100 spare blades. You'll go through them quite quickly, and they're very cheap. £10 for a box is definitely worth doing if you've got a lot of foam to cut. So let's make a start and sort out one of my old cases. This is a Perry 1520, and I've had it man and boy for many years now. It's been around the world a few times. I think it would be ideal to repurpose this as a flight case for a mirrorless camera kit. I've still got the foam on the lid, so I'll keep that. So I just need to fill the base and start from there. We can see that the depth of this case is about 120 millimeters. So I'm going to use two 30 millimeter thick sheets at the bottom and a 50 millimeter sheet on top. So let's measure and cut this to fit. I'd definitely advise you to use at least one of the cut proof gloves when you're using the scalpel. It saves knocking chunks at your fingers. Sorry about the noise, there's a massive storm going on out there. Something you'll notice when you first start to fit sheets inside your cases is that most cases have got a corner, a radius to the base, and all the corners. And this particularly affects the very first sheet you put at the bottom because you're going to have to chamfer off all the sharp edges so it sits flat to the bottom of your case. But it's not difficult. You don't have to be super accurate, you just have to take off enough so that the base sits flat. The easiest thing when you've got one piece perfectly fitted is to use that as the template for the next sheet so it all gets a lot quicker. So now I've got my case filled with foam. It's not super accurate, but it's not going to move. And that's dense. So the first thing we want to think about 
and it is quite important, is the layout of where we want to put all our kit. So we can start arranging stuff with everything we want to get in the uh, case. You need to leave at least 11 mil between objects. Something worth thinking about here is the weight of everything you're carrying, because if you put all the heavy stuff at one end, you won't be able to carry the case properly. So I'm thinking about balancing off the weight as much as anything. OK, I think I'm happy with that, but it's much easier to cut the foam when it's not in your case. Now the trick here is to treat the scalpel a bit like a pen. You're just drawing round your object, just enough to score the top so you can see where you are. And keep it vertical if you can. You should then be able to pull the foam and see where you've drawn. So time to go around again. This time try and keep it to at least 10 millimeters thick. This foam is clearly made up of what look to be about 10 millimeter layers all sandwiched and glued together. And the idea is you cut down with the scalpel about 10 millimeters deep and then peel it off a layer at a time. If I have a complaint it's that the glue used between these layers is almost too strong. You need to be able to get your fingers in between the layers and peel it off. The trouble is, because the glue's so strong, it's very easy to rip the foam instead of pulling the layers apart nice and cleanly. I wish that glue wasn't quite as strong, but you want to push your fingers into that seam of glue and you can just pull out the shape you just cut. So now we're happy with the basic shape. We can start to cut 10 mil at a time in layers. However, for this lens, it's more than 50 millimeters thick. So I'm going to be going all the way through this sheet and probably onto the next sheet lower down inside the case. So this is easy. Now obviously this lens is round so when I start to think about going through to the next layer I need to make the shape smaller so it fits snugly. So now all my kit's secure, and that was a good use of a rainy Sunday. <laughs> <laughs>